everyone, it's me Erica Moore and welcome back to my channel. For this another video, we are going to talk about the cell cycle and the cell division. The cell cycle is an ordered series of events involving cell growth and cell division that produces two new daughter cells. Cells on the path to the cell division proceed through a series of precisely timed and carefully regulated stages of growth, DNA replication, and division that produces two identical cells. The cell cycle has two major phases, interphase and the mitotic phase. During interphase, the cell grows and DNA is replicated. During the mitotic phase, the replicated DNA and cytoplasmic contents are separated and the cell divides. The first phase is interphase. During interphase, the cell undergoes normal growth processes while also preparing for cell division. In order for a cell to move from interphase into the mitotic phase, many internal and external conditions must be met. The three stages of interface are called G1, S, and G2. The first stage of interface is called the G1 phase because from a microscopic aspect, little change is visible. However, during the G1 stage, the cell is quite active at the biochemical level. The cell is accumulating the building blocks of chromosomal DNA and the associated proteins as well as accumulating sufficient energy reserves to complete the task of replicating each chromosome in the nucleus. Throughout interface, nuclear DNA remains in a semi-condensed chromatin configuration. In the S phase, DNA replication can proceed through the mechanisms that result in the formation of identical pairs of DNA molecules sister chromatids that are firmly attached to the centromic region. The centrosome is duplicated during the S phase. The two centrosomes will give rise to the mitotic spindle, the apparatus that orchestrates the movement of chromosomes during mitosis. At the center of each animal cell, the centrosomes of animal cells are associated with a pair of rude-like objects, the centrioles which are at right angles to each other. Centrioles help organize cell division. Centrioles are not present in the centrosomes of other eukaryotic species, such as plants and most fungi. In the G2 phase, the cell replenishes its energy stores and synthesizes proteins necessary for chromosome manipulation. Some cell organelles are duplicated, and the cytoskeleton is dismantled to provide resources for the mitotic phase. There may be additional cell growth during G2. The final preparations for the mitotic phase must be completed before the cell is able to enter the first stage of mitosis. The mitotic phase is a multi-step process during which the duplicated chromosomes are aligned, separated, and move into two new identical daughter cells. The first portion of the mitotic phase is called karyokinesis, or nuclear division. The second portion of the mitotic phase, called cytokinesis, is the physical separation of the cytoplasmic components into the two daughter cells. Karyokinesis, also known as mitosis, is divided into a series of phases, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, that result in the division of the cell nucleus. During prophase, the first phase, the nuclear envelope starts to dissociate into small vesicles and the membranous organelles such as the Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum fragment and disperse toward the periphery of the cell. The nucleus disappears. The centrosomes begin to move to opposite poles of the cell. Microtubules that will form the mitotic spindle extend between the centrosomes pushing them farther apart as the microtubule fibers lengthen. The sister chromatids begin to coil more tightly with the aid of condensing proteins and become visible under a light microscope. 
During pro-metaphase, the first change phase, many processes that were begun in pro-phase continue to advance. The remnants of the nuclear envelope fragment, the mitotic spindle continues to develop as more microtubules assemble and stretch across the length of the former nuclear area. Some chromosomes become more condensed and discrete. During metaphase, the change phase, all the chromosomes are aligned in a plane called the metaphase plate or the equatorial plane, midway between the two poles of the cell. The sister chromatids are still tightly attached to each other by cohesin proteins. At this time, the chromosomes are maximally condensed. During anaphase, the upward phase, the cohesin proteins degrade and the sister chromatids separate at the centromere. Each chromatid, now called a chromosome, is pulled rapidly toward the centrosome to which its microtubule is attached. The cell becomes visibly elongated or oval shaped as the polar microtubules slide against each other and the metaphase plate where they overlap. During telophase, the distance phase, the chromosomes reach the opposite poles and begin to decondense, relaxing into a chromatin configuration. The mitotic spindles are depolymerized into tuberine monomers that will be used to assemble cytoskeletal components for each daughter cell. Nuclear envelopes form around the chromosomes and nucleosomes appear within the nuclear area. Cytokinesis or cell motion is the second main stage of the mitotic phase during which cell division is completed via the physical separation of the cytoplasmic components into two daughter cells. Division is not complete until the cell components have been apportioned and completely separated into the two daughter cells. Although the stages of mitosis are similar for most eukaryotes, the process of cytokinesis is quite different for eukaryotes that have cell walls such as plant cells. Not all cells adhere to the classic cell cycle pattern in which a newly formed daughter cell immediately enters the preparatory phases of interphase, closely followed by the mitotic phase. Cells in G0 phase are not actively preparing to divide. The cell is in a coescent stage that occurs when cells exit the cell cycle. Some cells enter G0 temporarily until an external signal triggers the onset of G1. Other cells that never or rarely divide, such as mature cardiac mast cell and nerve cells, remain in G0 permanently. Sometimes you accidentally bite your lip or find some cut in your arm, but in a matter of days, the wound heals. Or you are looking in the mirror and you notice that you are a lot bigger than you were five. One thing that they have in common, and that is mitosis. Mitosis is a process of cell duplication or reproduction during which one cell gives rise to two genetically identical daughter cells. Strictly applied, the term mitosis is used to describe the duplication and distribution of chromosomes, the structures that carry the genetic information. Mitosis can be divided into phases. In prophase, the mitotic spindle forms and the chromosomes condense. The nuclear envelope breaks down and the chromosomes attach to the mitotic spindle. Both chromatids of each chromosome attach to the spindle at a specialized chromosomal region. In metaphase, the condensed chromosomes align in a plane across the equator of the mitotic spindle. Anaphase follows as the separated chromatids move abruptly toward opposite spindle poles. Finally, in telophase, a new nuclear envelope forms around each set of unraveling chromatids. Meiosis, also called reduction division, division of a germ cell involving two fissions of the nucleus and giving rise to four gametes, or sex cells, each possessing half the number of chromosomes of the original cell. The process of meiosis is characteristic of organisms that reproduce sexually. Such species have in the nucleus of each cell a diploid or double set of chromosomes consisting of two haploid sets, one inherited from each parent. 
These haploid sets are homologous. They contain the same kind of genes but not necessarily in the same form. In humans, for example, each set of homologous chromosomes contains a gene for blood type, but one set may have the gene for blood type A and the other set the gene for blood type B. Prior to meiosis, each of the chromosomes in the diploid germ cell has replicated and thus consists of a joined pair of duplicate chromatids. Meiosis begins with the contraction of the chromosomes in the nucleus of the diploid cell. Homologous paternal and maternal chromosomes pair up along the midline of the cell. Each pair of chromosomes called a tetrad or a bivalent consists of four chromatids. At this point, the homologous chromosomes exchange genetic material by the process of crossing over. The homologous pairs then separate each pair being pulled to opposite ends of the cell, which then pinches in half to form two daughter cells. Each daughter cell of this first meiotic division contains a haploid set of chromosomes, the chromosomes at this point still. In the second meiotic division, each haploid daughter cells divide. There is no further reduction in chromosome number during this division as it involves the separation of each chromatid pair into two chromosomes which are pulled to the opposite ends of the daughter cells. Each daughter cell then divides in half, thereby producing a total of four different haploid gametes. When two gametes unite during fertilization, each contributes its haploid set of chromosomes to the new individual, restoring the diploid number. That's all for this video. I hope you like, enjoy, and learn a lot about the cell cycle and cell division. Thank you for watching.